This is what our site looked like in 1994, right after we purchased it. Basically, an eroding, uh, draining solar oven. Very sterile. But we then, with our neighbors, planted the rain and planted trees. And this is what it is today. So, all this abundance is the result of first planting the rain. So we planted all our vegetation within or beside sunken water harvesting earthworks or rain gardens. So the water collects there, we mulch the surface, we never have bare earth. You want this rich sponge of organic matter, which is the natural filter, filter filtering any contaminants that come in, but also they quickly perk the, helps perk the water into the soil and, and really reduces water loss to evaporation. This is also building soil. The fertility is ever enhanced. And uh, so we're growing all kinds of stuff. Got a pomegranate behind me. Behind that there's a fruiting European olive. We've got mesquite trees. We've got desert ironwoods. And the other great thing is, it's such a beautiful spot. You can see here, here comes some of my neighbors. So people love to walk up and down here, okay? Because it's like walking through a neighborhood botanical garden. And uh, the other really sweet thing is the street is the primary water source irrigating these street trees. So the, uh, here we used to have a driveway. We removed the asphalt driveway, removed that impermeable pavement, making a permeable area where now water is absorbed instead of shed away. And since there was this existing dip, the street runoff runs along the curb of the street, then in here fills up this whole basin and after it's filled up, the water just backs up on itself, no more comes in, and if there's any surplus water, it just goes down the street to the next basin. So it's a wonderful self-maintaining system. It's like an eddy or a backwater, not an erosive channel. And uh, when I pointed out the desert ironwood and the mesquites, this is a living orchard. 90% of the species are native to the Tucson Basin. So when we started and had no vegetation, the only wildlife we had was exotic pigeons. Now most of those have gone and been replaced with over two dozen native bird species because we planted so many of the indigenous uh, plant species, which are the habitat for the native birds. But we also selected these plants for food for us. So the desert ironwood has peanut flavored seeds. The um, pahoba, we can use its seeds to make uh, various drinks. The uh, creosote, we can take the flower bud and we can pickle those, make uh, capers. Oop, there's the bud. And uh, the barrel cactus, who can eat the fruit. Black seeds, you can pop, use as a poppy seed substitute. You can soak this yellow flesh of the barrel cactus fruit in cold water for 20 minutes. You got a free hair conditioner. And uh, very sweet edible pods coming off the mesquite tree. And Phoenix uh, has a mesquite pod grinding event. Get more information at your guide to green and also at desertharvesters.org. So, the thing I just wanted to push here is if we learn to recognize how we can convert so called wastes, such as stormwater, use them as resources, such as this pure rainwater for irrigation we can create abundance where we currently have scarcity. And thanks again for another virtual tour. Uh, for more information on all of this, you can go to my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, my website, harvestingrainwater.com, and another website, desertharvesters.org, or your guide to green. Thanks a lot.